Hey guys, so we are going to try and make some lye. I've been wanting to try this technique for a very long time. And since it's winter, why not? What I have here are ashes from my wood stove. The bulk of which are hardwood ashes, although there are softwood ashes in here as well. And some charcoal and stuff. And a piece of metal, apparently. Um, there's several different techniques and different ways to do this. Uh, the first one we're going to try is a soak method. So I've got, geez, actually more. You can see ash is up to here. More than half a bucket in ash. So let's put some water on this um, and see how much we can get in. I think I'd like to do half ash, half water. So, I, you know, this is light, so I'm sure it's going to get damp. But we're going to soak this for several days and then we will remove the water from it and see um, how strong it is using a variety of old techniques. So um, eventually I'd like to make some soap from it. So this is the first step in making soap is getting lye. The second step is getting fat. And we've been collecting fat all year. Um, tallow from beef and um, lard from pork. So yeah, let's add some water. So the preferred kind of water to use for this is rain water, and I've got this rain barrel hooked up to one of my gutters, comes down, fills the barrel, and it has an attachment on the back. You see that tube right there, so when the water gets too high, it'll go down the tube and go into the regular gutter, which goes into my drain field. So we're going to utilize rain water. It's the best for making soap. Um, I think it's pretty darn good for leaching as well, since uh, the only chemicals it has in it is whatever is coming from the skies, which is probably more than I care to think about. But we'll fill that up, dump it in here, fill it up, dump it in here, fill it up, dump it in here. And uh, we'll do that until it's full. So while that's filling, I have uh, another rainwater container that I've gathered. Oh, jeez, it's frozen. I already took some ice off. It's freezing last night, but slowly but surely, we'll get it filled. Hey guys, so I've got my ash bucket here, and I've been stirring it up every day. You can see that the water is on top of the ashes, and it's starting to get this interesting kind of orangey color. So um, usually you have to boil the uh, lye down to get um, to the right strength. I guess that's that's the right word. So we're going to uh, try floating an egg in it and see if we're anywhere near getting the right strength right now. I have an egg. I'm going to mark my lie egg. I've used it a few times. It has not floated yet, but um, it's been a few more days here, so let's give it a try. Um, and I've got my tongs. I'm supposed to be able to reuse an egg. I'm just going to put it down at the bottom. Oop. And release it. Let's see what we get. Now, what we I am seeing that I haven't seen before is that the egg is standing up on end. Before it was rolling down flat, flat on itself. So let me just kind of give it a push and see if it'll just roll over. Nope. It actually kind of came up a little bit, which is telling me. Let's see that um, this lye is getting stronger sitting here. I think in a few more days what I'll do is um, pour off all that lye water, put it in, in a pot, and probably boil it down on my outdoor 
fireplace out there. I'm going to have to figure out a sacrificial pot for that, though. Don't want to do it in cast iron. I've got a perfect cast iron pot for that, but we can't do that. So, anyway, uh, we do progresseth with the lye. And again, this is um, will be potassium hydrochloride or KOH, not sodium, um, but, but potassium hydroxide, excuse me, not sodium hydroxide. So this is the weaker lye solution, but it will still make a darn good um, farm soap, like a paste soap, or a, a perfect liquid soap. But we'll get to that. So I'm going to put this back in here. Um, you can see it stirs up the ashes a little bit, doesn't it? And then I will wash my egg and put it back in the fridge, and uh, we'll test this again in a little while. And yeah, I know I should have gloves on, but um, so far so good. I've done this uh, mess with lye for years and haven't burned my hands yet. Now my eyes are a different story. I do have coverings on my eyes and my head. So, okay, see you guys. Hi, you guys. So this uh, lye solution has been sitting in the bucket now for a couple weeks, and I've been coming out and just stirring it up each day. And I think I might have to reduce it, which is why I've got my uh, crappy pot out here. But I want to look at the lye solution and test its pH as well as um, see if we can float an egg in it. All right, so we're going to go with the egg float. Let's see what happens with that. And this is um, about what happened last time. The egg seems to try to want to go up, tip up on its own, but it's actually still touching the bottom. I know in the camera it may not quite look like that, but it is. So that is supposed to be one way to tell if a solution is thick enough. And the other thing is apparently pH should be between 13 and 14 to be strong enough to make soap. Let's see here. And we're at tw uh, 12, 12 something. 12.1, 12.12, close enough. All right, so this means we are going to need to reduce this solution. So I'm gonna put it in this pot, my pot that I use for lots of experiments. I'll, what's in there is actually beeswax, so I, I think it'll be fine. I don't think it's gonna really interact. And then I'll put it up on the side burner of the barbecue and we'll do this outside. So I'm gonna get going. All right, so I put some in the pot, and now I'm going to light it up and uh, boil it down. I don't know how, how much I have in here. Maybe a liter? I don't know. even know how much KOH I'm going to need or potash um, I'm going to need to make soap, so I'm kind of winging it here. Uh, other videos that I've seen uh, don't give exact measurements. I mean, this is talk about making something from scratch. So um, anyway, we'll figure it out together. All right, you guys, so I've had this boiling for about an hour, and you can see this white line down there. That's where I started, and it's starting to get kind of opaque, and uh, I'm going to turn it off now, and I'm going to let it cool, and then I want to do the egg test and uh, the pH test again, but it's going to take, oh, I don't know, several hours for it to cool down, but... That's where we are. Um, yeah, there you go. Hi, you guys. So after boiling this for just about an hour, we have clear success. Floaty. Uh, it's also darkened up quite a bit. Um, so apparently there is some confusion about how much egg you are supposed to be able to see. Some people say it should be a quarter of the egg. But my research says that what you see of the egg should be the size of a quarter. So you understand the difference there. So that's the size of a quarter to me, which means I think we have enough uh, potassium hydrochloride. 
that right? How do, yeah. KOH. In this container. So I'm going to strain it. And um, yeah, we're gonna make some gonna make some soap. But that is how you make KOH or uh, I should say caustic potash. Um, there is some confusion, and I don't know the answer to this, maybe a chemist can help me, that this is not actually KOH until you add an element to it, a calcium element, but I haven't been able to prove that. I've only read it in a couple other things. Um, anyway, so there's some confusion, but for our purposes, because most of the population calls this um, KOH or uh, caustic potash, that's what I'm going to go with. Um, all right, so that's how you do that. And uh, yeah, let's, we're going to make some soap.